Now that spring's here, a lot of us will be getting our Land Rovers ready for the road, taking them out of winter storage perhaps, and uh, enjoying the summer sunshine. So, as I said before in a previous video, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So today I want to just mention a little thing about radiators. Now I did put a little link up in this corner about uh, a Land Rover that had a warped head. And the reason it had a warped head was because of the radiator. It wasn't because of the engine, it was because of the radiator. Now just a little preamble about that particular video is that the customer drove this car down to Boston, hot summer, and um, he had the air conditioning on, which means in front of this radiator there would have been a condenser and a fan. The air conditioning was on full on and it was a very hot day. But what happened when he got to Boston is the temperature just shot up um, and lost coolant and it overheated. So he got to a Land Rover shop and they didn't have the parts so I flew them from England in, on a 36 hour FedEx, got them to the shop, got it fixed, drove it back, same thing happened again. So what was the problem? Did they fit the head wrong? Well no, not really. What was happened was, although the, the radiator wasn't leaking, and this is a modern type, unfortunately I haven't got the old type with the copper tanks, but what had happened was the little fins in here had almost all disintegrated. And the, th the problem was you couldn't see it because of the condenser in front of the radiator. So you had warm air coming across the condenser and heating up an already hot radiator. And the reason we have those little fins is to do the maximum heat transfer to the air. So the water goes through the pipes and it picks up by these little fins and then it's passed through. Um, it's cooled down. So in effect, when we took the radiator out, and this has happened to about 80% of Land Rovers that I've bought from the UK, all Land Rovers to be restored. You pick the radiator up and you go bang like this and all the fins drop out. Because even though they look as if they're in place, they're all corroded. So a little tip for you, really a good tip for you. Get into your, go to your Land Rover and power wash the radiator while it's in situ. You know, go through the grill at the front if you can. If it's got air conditioning, come through the other side. But power wash it through, not just with the hose pipe, that's not enough power. But obviously not with a damn steam cleaner, 3000 PSI. Just one of those little Karsha or whatever you call Simonized power washers, you know you get for your patio. That's not enough to damage the radiator. But, if you see a big pool of fins and rubbish and corrosion coming out, then it's time to fix your radiator before it lets you down. And the reason is, because it's made of copper, uh, the, and copper and brass, the fins corrode because there's less surface area on the fins. So with all the rubbish getting kicked up from the car in front or you're driving through salt in winter or whatever, these, the fins in the, the old type of radiator corrode at an alarming rate because you've got heating and cooling, heating and cooling. And salt doesn't like that. It doesn't, doesn't like that so it eats into the metal. So power wash out your radiator. And if you see after that that the fins have disappeared, get another radiator. Because they don't leak. That's the, that's the most frustrating part. People think a radiator's finished because it leaks. Well, it isn't always the case. It's, so what happens is, if you lose all the fins out of here, and a great big part of it, say for example, you lost 75% of the fins on these radiators, you've lost nearly 80% of your cooling. I'm not very good with maths, by the way, but you can understand my point. You've only got a, a small band that's actually doing cooling because the air's going to pass straight through and do nothing. And the same sort of thing works for intercoolers too, only not so much so because they're aluminium. 
So wash them out. And if you find it, don't, you know, if come to me and say, oh, Michael, wash my radiator out. <laughs> now it's all bits on the floor. Well, that's a good thing, because at least you know how to fix it before you broke down at the side of the road. So, what is it with the new radiators? These are the replacement radiators. They're cheaper. They're a lot cheaper than the Land Rover one, a lot cheaper than the brass one. Obviously made in China, everything else is. So what's wrong with them? Well, not much really, but you've got to know a few little bits and pieces. Little bits and piece one. Hose on here for the uh, expansion tank is fragile. You break this off, it's tough. Just be careful pulling hoses on and off that. Second thing you've got to watch for. Again, prizing hoses off these plastic tanks. Crack this bit, crack this, game over. They're very difficult to repair and sometimes they're more cost effective to just to get a new one. Now I like these simply because they don't corrode as much. Um, they seem to last okay. The quality was quite good. It's sometimes bad fitting or bad removal that causes problems. But one of the principal things, and I'm going to show you what happened to this radiator, is when people put the TDIs together, they forget this little clamp on the oil cooler hoses. It's really, really important. You can get away with it a little bit on the brass ones, on the brass radiators, but these is a little brass oil cooler built into plastic. And with the vibration of the pipes going like this, banging about and things like this, they crack. The oil coolers crack and then you get oil into your water, but not water into your oil. And people jump up and down and think, oh my head gasket's gone. Mm, not really. The reason is you've got higher oil pressure going through here than water pressure. So the water can't go that way, but oil can come this way. So this little bracket here, if you can imagine your pipes are coming up here, this is a little clamp that holds them together and it will help stop that resonation, resonation of, can't even speak this morning. <laughs> it is kind of early. But this will stop a lot of problems. Just a little tiny clamp. And you can see there it holds the pipes together. Now, the way that this radiator didn't fit that and this, I'm going to put my old friendly smoke tester on uh, and show you. I've kept this radiator for a reason. Uh, it's, it leaks now out of here somewhere, but I'm going to show you what happened. Give it a minute or two and it will um, generate some smoke. And I want you to pay... Oops, I've stood on the hose there. <clears throat> I want you to pay attention to this piece here. I'm going to try and come in and zoom in a little bit. But you can see, I don't know if you can see already, the smoke coming out of here. Let me see if I can come around and zoom in. Yeah, you can see smoke coming out of here because somebody dropped it. But more importantly, look at here. Can you see smoke coming out of here? That means the oil cooler is cracked inside and that was the cause of water oil getting into the water. So unfortunately it's a new radiator. Something so simple as a stupid little clamp like this to hold the pipes together caused that. So don't make that problem. You know, I mean Let's, let's try and prevent a lot of uh, overheating problems because a lot of people say that with the 300 TDI for example oh the, radio, oh, the 200 TDI or oh, head gasket's gone, head gasket's gone well the reason is it's overheated now there is one little thing which is quite important especially with the 300 TDI is that the temperature sender in the top of the engine 
is okay place but it's not the best in fact they actually moved it on some of the engines and put it right on top of the, the head itself because water, the water level in the thermostat housing in fact I tell you what I've got one down here just let me pause this video and reset up and I've, I've just noticed one here so here's a, um, a 300 TDI this is the engine I'm going to put in my truck um, one of the problems with the 300 TDI is the temperature sender is here okay now the problem is obviously it's there's the thermostat so it's under the thermostat but sometimes with the 300 TDI this little bleeder here isn't sufficient to let the air out so if you've got um, when you're filling up your radiator or filling up your cooling system I fill up the expansion tank first and then put, get it halfway, then put the top on, fill up the radiator, take the cap off the uh, radiator itself, the filler bung, fill that up, put the cap on, and then take this one off and fill it up because you'll find you've got an airlock. Now, if a 300 TDI gets an airlock in the system, the, th the thermostat, won't, the temperature sender won't work properly and it'll show just normal because even though your engine's boiling away, <laughs> The service that the sensor here shows absolutely normal. So one of the when I used to do the um, when I used to put the 300 TDIs into the um, Discovery twos, we didn't bother with that one. We used this one. There's usually a temperature sender in the top. If your 300 TDIs got a uh, what do they call it now? ERG valve. You can always tell them because they've got uh, different pumps and things like that. Well, not different pumps, but they've got electrical uh, sender on here. And the, there's a little sender in the top that reads your ERG valve. Well, you can take that out. And with a bit of bushings and things, you can put a sender in the top. And you get a better reading. It's a lot easier. One other thing people have some problems with. TDIs because these engines have been in discos, they've been in defenders, they've been in all sorts of bits and pieces. And of course, there's an awful lot of people got engines on the floor and you don't really know what they've come out of. So what happens is these temperature senders here come in, I think it's three different colours. There's black, yellow, brown, and black, yellow, and green. I can't remember off the top of my head which is which, but I know the yellow ones were for the HS 2.8. They were a little bit different. But um, you sometimes your gauge doesn't read right, so you've got to change that sender for the corresponding one. Sometimes retrofitting is a little bit difficult because you've got to have the gauge and the sender unit, uh, you know, the telltale gauge on your dash, uh, correspond and work together. So, cooling these engines down is really important. You know, a lot, of the pro a lot of the problems I get are from overheating is actually quite preventable, really. It's, uh, it's sad, really. The water pumps do sometimes give a little trouble up here. They, they sometimes get a bit loose. But for leaks, well, I haven't seen all that many. They've been quite good in that respect. Um... What else? What else can I think about? Um, whenever I do the head gaskets, I always replace the head gaskets with a, a multi-layer head gasket, which is like different thin, uh, th thicknesses of sheet metal. There's no asbestos or anything like that. And that allows the head to move a little bit whilst re re keeping its tension. Because it's an aluminium head and a cast iron block, they both expand and contract at different rates. And that's why in the early days they used to actually uh, blow head gaskets, because, um, especially at the sort of the back, um, because of the different rates of expansion and contractions. Now why did they always blow at the back? Well, the water pump passes water into the engine block, um, and it and it comes into the engine block at the back of the engine, just, well, at, the, at that side of the engine, but at the back of the, the front of the block. I can't splutter it out this morning. So the back gets hotter than the front, if you see what I mean. 
Earlier I said on the 300 TDI that water is collected from here. Um, actually I got it the wrong way around because <laughs> it was very early this morning. Water actually sucked in here through the from the radiator and then it's pushed through the block here. Well you can imagine this is going to get quite warm because there's not much circulation getting pushed through the back. On the HS 2.8 that piece was right in the middle of the block. So water was sucked in from the radiator and went into the block here. I just want to get that clear. But the, 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 because the back doesn't get so much uh, cooling, and that's the reason why your heater hoses are at the back, because they're the, getting the warmest. So um, that's why they well um, yeah, that's why they blew at the back. So if you look after these things and do a little few modifications on them, they're okay. But I said, I'm telling you now, most of the problems are caused by radiators with bad fins. So check out for that, power wash it out, if it, if, and, and if, if, it, if all bits come out and it all falls to bits, great. Then you know you've got to replace it before you're stuck at the side of the road. I hope this helps and have a happy summer. Talk to you later.